<laughs> okay, you are running uh, for Senator of New York. You are challenging uh, current Senator Chuck Schumer. He's been Senator since 1999. You're originally from, from Yonkers, New York, correct? Correct. Not Yonkers. All right. So listen, uh, let me start here. You know, this is Black Political Talk Radio, and I want to start with a topic that's really important to our audience. Uh, do you believe the election was stolen from Donald Trump? Look, I think at the end of the day, Joseph Robinette Biden is the president of these United States. And I think that for us, uh, we certainly be better off investing the time having better conversations, talking about the poverty rates for our children that go unaddressed, talking about the schools that are systemically failing our children. Uh, that has been the focus of our campaign. I think relitigating the 2020 election uh, has already shown uh, to have caused more strife than this work. Uh but I know from my audience, they, they don't want to see crimes committed in plain sight. And we have nearly 200 ele election deniers running for office right now. So I do want to know, do you believe the election was stolen from Donald Trump? Because you're running well, as a Republican. I, 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 yeah, I've been very clear on the record that I believe that the election was the election. That, pres that Joe Biden was the election. He's the president of the United States. And I think that we should so it wasn't off. stolen. Certainly. So it no, wasn't stolen. We can, we can have... Okay. We can have we can have conversations about uh, are there things that happened over the electoral process uh, that could have occurred differently. We have that pretty much every election cycle. Uh, but I think at this juncture, given what has transpired, particularly in the aftermath of the attempts to certify the election, uh, what we saw now over 800 people across every state in this nation arrested for effectively breaking glass at the people's house, trying to, uh, in many ways, undermine veracity of our institutions that yes, uh, we should be talking about the other issues, but certainly not trying to make light of what occurred on that fateful day. Meaning on January 6th. So you are not a election denier. <laughs> yes, for the third time, no. Okay, um, no, no, for, because I, I asked you straight up and you, you didn't say yes or no, you just kind of said he is the president. I, I, I mean, I feel like, I, I, again, I think Joe, Joseph Biden is the president of the United States, and it's important that we talk about the fact that he's the president of the United States, because if you look at the economy, it is failing too many people in the middle class and all across uh, the economic landscape. It's important to talk about uh, his tenure as president of the United States, because we have seen what has happened on the southern border, where fentanyl now was a leading cause of death, people aged 18 to 45, while he and my opponent, Chuck Schumer, say that the border is more secure We're, we're, we're going to get to that. Border. We're going to get to that, sir. It's, just, it's yeah. important for my audience because, as we know, too many times we see rich people getting away with crimes in plain sight, and election deniers are really dangerous, and the transfer of power is really important to me. So I just wanted to, to, to make sure we got that clear. So you're saying you're not, that that's great. Um, eight, eight, eight out of 10 black voters say that Trump is a racist. Do you believe Donald Trump is a racist? Uh, look, I think the reality is it's a, it's a foolish question, uh, not because there aren't people who have that opinion, but the reality is that power, as it is actually acquired in this nation, uh, doesn't care about your feelings, doesn't care about whether someone is racist or not. Uh, we had the Civil Rights Act of this nation signed by a man who used the N-word more times in one day than your favorite rapper's favorite rapper. Uh, and that has very little to do. But sir, uh, but sir, with all due respect, sir, with all due respect, with all due respect, I asked you a question, though, because well, hold up, sir, 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 you said my question was foolish. Can, this isn't a question. Hold on one second. This, the, this, this, is a, this is a, this is a, this is a, sir, sir, sir. This is a, this is a question that is important to black voters. Because one, because well, again, what, because eight, hold on a second, eight, eight out of 10 black voters do feel like Trump is a racist and not calling out racism means that you are complicit. You are, you're, you're a complicit well, in your well, silence. Yeah, so I'm yeah, simply, yeah, sir, 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 yeah, I, I am yeah. simply asking you yeah, if you don't, that's on. fine. I am simply you, asking you, you versus you, deflecting, you, you, you sir, sir, you, sir, 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 with all due respect, with versus deflecting, you, you, I'm asking you a question. Well, I'm not deflecting. You, you've asked me two do, questions. Do you, now, do you or do you, no, but you said you didn't like the question. Do you or do you not think Trump is a racist? It's just that that simple. If you know, that's fine. I, I, re respectfully, I, I think that people have their opinions. My personal humble opinion is that whether Trump is a racist or not a racist distracts from the real issues of racism that continue to cripple the outcomes for black and brown people. So racism from our president is a real people. issue. But if you don't want to answer the question, that's OK. Respect, if you don't want to answer the question, that's OK. I, uh, racism you, from you, our president is a real issue. Are you gonna? Ask, are you going to allow me to get through? I've, I've asked you twice. I've asked you twice. Do you, do you, you, not, do you no, not think Trump is a racist? You haven't asked me twice. 
I sure. have. I asked you twice, and you're deflecting. And we only have but so I'm much not, time, so you can't filibuster. You can't, you, you, here's the thing. Okay, I'll try. I'll, okay, okay, okay. Let's let's let's, let's question, restart. Let's then restart. You can wait for an answer. You I'll, cannot, try, I'll try. I'll try. I'll try. I'll try one more time. I'll try one more you time. Can try all do you want? You're do, not allowing do you, me to you, answer the question. If you don't, I am. But you're you're deflecting. You said it's a bad question. Do you or do you not think? Trump you're, you're, is a racist. You are not allowing me to answer the question. I've, if you I'm tr- I have tried, but we can't filibuster here, sir. It's a really easy question. question. It you, is you said you don't like the question. question. You, okay, you moving on. You don't. You don't. Question, you, you, you refuse to answer. You refuse to answer. You refuse to answer. You refuse to answer. Moving on. Moving on. We don't have. So, so, sir, your team has to come on. Your team has to come on this show. And I'm asking you fair questions about your party. We're only two questions you in, and you're and you're being very defensive. Yes, I have. Ah. So let's go on to another question. Moving on, moving on. Student loan forgiveness. Uh, Chuck Schumer has been a big advocate of student loan forgiveness. Uh, according to a Color of Change poll, 84% of Black voters support student loan forgiveness. Do you support student loan forgiveness? I am of the opinion uh, that on his watch in D.C., we have seen college tuition over my lifetime go up 500 percent it is my perspective that if you're going to have a serious conversation about how we reduce the cost of tuition for the people who need it the most then we cannot lie to people and so having a real honest conversation about tuition requires us to acknowledge the drivers for the reason that tuition is going up the reason that tuition has gone up 500 percent is because of the fact that the banks know that no matter how much the tuition goes up, the actual lender is guaranteed to get the money. If you had the price of the bacon, egg, and cheese determined by the fact that people were guaranteed to be able to pay for it, that price would go up too. So first and foremost, if you're serious about making sure that financial uh, discretion or financial uh, limitations are not a barrier to success in life, then we have to deal with the fact that we have to curb the cost of tuition, period. That starts with going to universities and saying that those diplomas that they're giving out, the degrees that they are tendering, they have to be actually tethered to someone's actual earning potential. That to me is how you actually deal with the underlying issue because the reason people care about debt reduction is because they believe that the debt is preventing them from being able to pay for college. So yes, we can have the blanket conversation. Do you support something or are you against something? But it is more important to understand the underlying issues that are impacting people every single day, impacting Black people every day. So sure. unless we're going to get serious with the institutions that have benefited okay. greatly by the fact that the investments in their endowment are tax-free, the fact that they are getting billions and billions and billions of dollars in tax-exempt money that they use to invest in things that do not benefit our community, and then the people that, are ben- that have the opportunity from our community to go to college end up paying a premium price that is not tethered in any financial reality, then we're gotcha. never going to get out of it. So, I'm sorry, that yes, we only have but so much time. Sure we only have but so much time, that. sir. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, so, so do, yeah, do you support think, student loan forginess? Do, do, do you support the, the, the $20,000 up to $20,000? forgiveness that is currently structured is a lie. I think that we have to it's reduce student loans, but the manner in which we're reducing them prevents us from actually solving the problem. Because so, it doesn't so, matter. It does, if you're allowing someone to get out of debt today, it doesn't matter if you're putting their child in a debtor's prisoner to prison cell right next door to them. So we have to. So be are you problem. saying are you saying that you don't support the student loan forgiveness plan? That's ten thousand dollars up to twenty thousand with Pell Grants. Are you saying you don't support what that? What I am saying it's, it's a lie. is that in a binary choice, where yesterday you had ten thousand dollars worth of debt, and tomorrow that you are out of it. That is beneficial for the people who received it, but it is not beneficial for society if we're not going to be honest about the fact that the people who are coming behind them are going to end up in that very. I'm trying to get an honest answer from you. Do you or do you not support the? Okay, sir. Respectfully, I don't know how many times you're going to sit here and try to call me dishonest to say I'm not trying to have your conversation. I'm trying to get an honest answer from you. I I gave you a very robust answer. I said I'm not saying yes or no. You're, I'm, I'm trying to get an honest answer. Require a yes or no answer. Some some it questions. It does. Do you support? It's a really clear us question. To have a robust okay. You, if you, you but I'm not clear if you, if you support the, the current plan right now that a lot of black voters that, that have. That sounds like a personal problem. Respectfully, I just gave you a very. Okay. If you if you don't want to answer it, I'm, I'm looking at the question, feedback. Sir. Okay. Fine. If, if, again. Okay. So so uh, have... so again so again you're you're running against uh, Chuck Schumer, and current New York senator. He's been in there since 1999. 
Yeah. One of the things that you've said is you've called Chuck Schumer a modern day George Wallace. Sure. And it's, it's, it's interesting because a lot of times when uh, black folks who aren't conservatives, when, when Jim Crow was mentioned, we're told, stop bringing up Jim Crow. And I, I can even recall Condoleezza Rice, who was raised in uh, Jim Crow, Alabama, saying the dangers of comparing things to Jim Crow. George Wallace, the former governor of Alabama, is a really heinous example. There's a lot of senators that I can't, that I'm, I don't agree with, but I would never even call, you know, Ted Cruz or George Wallace. I don't agree with him at all. But I need to know the certain policy points that you think that Chuck Schumer is, com is comparable to one of the most racist governors that we've, that we've really ever had uh, in, in, in my parents' lifetime. Well, certainly. I think, you know, if we're going to have an honest conversation, again, uh, racism comes in many different forms. Uh, we don't actually have to have a racist present for racism to persist. We know this because we talk about redlining. We understand that that persists. We talk about bridges that were put uh, in communities to prevent us from getting access to opportunities. So we know that the pervasive nature of the oldest sin in the history of humanity is that it metastasizes, it changes, it can evolve. When you look at the legacy of somebody like Charles Schumer, from my perspective, uh, he is on every side of every issue. Uh, he is everyone's friend, and so no one can identify him as the enemy. If you look at, for me, the most pervasive issue that we have in our communities today, uh, it is the lack of educational opportunity. And Chalk Schumer, uh, like George Wallace, uh, stands in the door well. He doesn't say segregation now, segregation forever. He says no to school choice. He says no to the type of opportunities that prevent us from giving children the skills they need to become the best version of themselves. In New York City specifically, we just had the results from the math exam. 70% of the students who were Black who sat to take that state test failed the results. Uh, so that is, from my estimation, it is child abuse. It is Jim Crow in broad daylight. We have public schools. More but segregated sir, but today sir, but sir, than the height but of Jim sir, Crow. Um, Gotcha. So the thing is, though, I mean, just recently, uh, Chuck Schumer, through the, through the Consolidated Appropriations Act of 2021, Correct. he got $4 billion for New York public schools. The, uh, the, 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 the debate over, over school choice and public schools, that's one thing. I know a lot of people who support school choice. I know Correct. a lot of people who feel like school choice takes away from public schools. But I'm trying to narrow in on this comparison of George Wallace, who stood at the University of Alabama and Correct. refused to allow black people to walk up to the University of Alabama. George Wallace uh, blocked uh, a colored only signs from, from, from being removed. We're talking right. about Jim Crow, Look, Alabama. Again, so I just, I'm, I'm just trying to hold on. I haven't, I haven't, I haven't, hold on. I haven't got the question out. So I'm just trying to figure out. I'm yeah, trying so to figure out again, because, oh, sir, 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 let me, let me get it out. I'm just trying to figure out this. This is a really deep example. This is a really deep example. So give me policy we're points. Going, we're not always going to agree give, on give me, give, I think but, it is sir, 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 I, sir, give me policy points. Give me policy I'm, points I'm on how policy. Governor George Wallace, because again, I want to compare George Wallace to even Mitch McConnell, is the same as somebody like points. Chuck Schumer. I, to, 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 if somebody hands you crumbs at a table that was not built for you, but was built to serve you, and says that's all Why George Wallace, want. though? Why George Why Wallace? Is that just a one-liner? George I Wallace is a George really Wallace. insidious example. Sir, again, if you, you would ask the question and then wait for me to answer. If you disagree with my answer, you've been you answering it. Commentary. I do disagree. I I'm trying to understand it. The, the commentary is this there was a man who quite literally stood in the doorwell of a schoolhouse, a college, be it, to say that black people should not pass through. Now you fast forward to a modern day society where the people who often do not want what is best for us often do it with a smile on their face. And you think often, Schumer is doing that to, 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 to black you're, children in New York City? You're, you're, you're interrupting me again. So again, you think, I, I can answer the question, but you can't keep interrupting. But I, 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 I want to know what's the comparison? The comparison is quite literally saying that in a 2022 America, in New York City, Black children are being denied access to the best practices that we know work because the man who wields more power are you saying school in choice? DC than any choice? other person not named Joe Biden is preventing us from implementing those best practices. I, I, don't I think, see how I that think is such a crazy analogy for you. A it's George a Wallace analysis is because, that is your because again. Because, 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 because again, when, when, when black Sir, folks, when, again, when, when we use references of Jim Crow, we we're, we're, we're told we're being too I'm sensitive. Not you we're, I'm not here to make you comfortable either. That's I want to understand a but George Wallace comparison. If you're going to make a George Wallace comparison, it has to be historically correct, sir. 
it has to be historically correct. It doesn't appear that it's historically correct. We're supposed to have in our communities is because not only do we empower people like Charles Ellis Schumer, but then we have people who become apologists for things that should be unacceptable. It is unacceptable. I agree. And we see that in the Republican Party. Like Baltimore and see 75 percent of the high school students reading at an elementary school level. And the vast. OK, let's let's you don't. OK, so 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 you think George Wallace and Chuck Schumer are comparing about about guns. Um, as you know, in New York, uh, guns are a, a big issue for New Yorkers. Sure. And the Supreme Court, sadly, has weakened gun laws in New York, and you have the governor and the mayor fighting back against that, especially allowing guns on subways in New York City. Do you support guns on subways in New York City? Well, I, I think, first and foremost, if we're going to talk about honesty, the framework there is is kind of disingenuous. But the Supreme Court... Ah, uh, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, do you they, support they, guns? <laughs> I'm asking you a question. You, like, you just said something. You that support guns on I, subways in New York City. To answer the question that, that you posed to me, it's a really it's simple question. Incorrect. It's factually you, incorrect. So I don't do know. Do you what support you guns on subways in New York City? Because I, I, because I, Governor Holchel and Mayor Adams are trying to block that. Are, are you familiar with this? I'm I'm quite familiar with the fact. Do you support that guns on subways in New York City? The state of New York uh, was infringing on people's rights to have a permit issued to them. Uh, as far as having guns on the subway, most people right. don't want gun-toting people on the subway. Me, specifically, the issue that we have in New York City is that we have criminals who do not care about the laws as they are written, that are taking guns wherever they want to take them, from the subway to the alleyway to any other place where innocent people know that their rights have now been depressed while the needs of the criminal class have been elevated. So, yes, it's a much longer conversation than one you would like so, to so, have. So you're uh, but, saying yes? You're saying you do support allowing guns? because they're, they're, they're trying to make... Guns on sir, New York City. Sir, if you You're just trying to make subways gun free zone. Yes or no to questions. I could have filled that up. I'm, I'm trying to get your I'm trying to You're, get where you stand, sir. To have my perspective. You're, You're a New Yorker. Very complicated do, you, do you support do you support allowing su- guns on I New York City subways? Laws that save lives. And the problem that we have right now is that we are too busy passing laws that are not actually keeping people safe. The laws that we are trying to pass here in, in the state of New York, which, by the way, have been deemed by many courts and by many experts across the spectrum, be they left of Bernie Sanders or right of Donald Trump, these individuals do not understand how these laws are intended to keep people safe. So from my perspective, we should spend more time talking about, yes, how do we reduce school shootings? How do we make sure that we have less criminals walking around with guns? And yes, how do we make sure that we have more responsible gun ownership? But none of that is what Kathy Hochul is doing right now. And none of that is- Okay, what is so, so, so From my perspective, you, if you disagree, that you is- don't support, You don't support I subways support being gun-free gun zones. gun laws, sir. You don't, I, you don't support subways being gun-free zones. You, you don't support that. I, I support people being able to have their constitutional rights honored, but I also well, recognize that we need to have laws in place that prevent people from being shot or stabbed or maimed on the subway. Absolutely, well, yes, we do. We do. And as you know, gun violence you're is not a big issue in this city. Violence. You're trying to whittle I am because we don't want gun violence on subways people. in New York City. Uh, <laughs> But it doesn't appear you're answering the question. I'll try and move on to a, uh, uh, look, another I'm question. I'm not here to give you the answers you want to hear, sir. I, I, I just want an answer. I, I feel like I, you're trying to be you vague one. and like dance around it, it's but not, it's, it's okay. That's man. fine. It, do you, do you support? You do you support? Do you support a national ban on abortion? I don't support a national ban on abortion, but the reality okay. is that Chuck Schumer is willing to lie to women to let them believe that their abortion rights are under attack. Everybody who knows anything knows that women had rights to abortion here in New York before Roe v. Wade was passed, and those rights have been codified into the state laws of New yeah. York. This means that they exist after the overturn. Well, that's why I asked if you so, support a national ban. You don't. That's great yeah. to know. You don't support that. Because, because, because Lindsey Graham does. So being that you're being in the Senate, Lindsey I'm Graham. curious. Mr. Pinion, Mr. Pinion, Mr. Pinion, Mr. Mr. Pinion, I don't know why you're being so defensive. There are other Republicans who support a national ban like Herschel Walker, who's running to be to be on the Senate in Georgia. I'm asking you if you are in line with a Lindsey Graham or if you're in line with with, I don't know, a a Rand Paul who does not support a a national ban on abortion. It's a fair question. That's a really that's a really important topic right now in this country to Kiva from Alabama. First time caller. What up, Kiva? Hi, Clay. How are you? Hey, good, good. What's up? What's your question, Mr. Pinion? 
Well, thank you so much for taking my call. I certainly am grateful to have the opportunity to speak. When I got on this call, I listened to you quite often, and I got on to listen. There was so much chaos going on, I couldn't understand what was happening. And that is not typical of any of the interviews that I've heard that you've um, had true. before. <laughs> and I am not only from Alabama, I am a graduate of the University of Alabama. And for Mr. Kenyon to come on here and invoke George Wallace, I am offended. I am embarrassed that as an African American man, that he would stoop so low to fall for the playbook of the Republican Party and invoke someone as him. He owes Vivian Malone, James Hood, and Arthur and Lucy an apology. I walk past Foster Auditorium every day I was on campus. And for him to say that anybody is similar to anything of a resemblance of George Wallace is a disservice to our race. And I am ashamed that he said anything like that and would encourage him to go and get some information about the University of Alabama, about George Wallace, and stop sounding like Marjorie Taylor Greene when he's speaking. And speaking over you was an embarrassment because anything that addressed Trump or any hot topic, he didn't give you an opportunity to say one word. And if Chuck Schumer's a racist and he can't say Trump is a racist with his discriminatory practice throughout his career is an embarrassment. And Kiva, we so have to go. We have to go. I'm so sorry, but I do want to give Mr. Pinion the final comment. Thank you for your call, Kiva. Mr. Pinion, take it away. Final comment. Quickly. I'm sorry. Uh, well, look, now that I've been called everything but a child of God, I'll say this. Uh, <laughs> look, I, I think at the end of the day, we have to have honest conversations about the people who are quite literally standing in the pathway of our opportunity. My purpose was not to offend her or anybody else that had to deal with the horrors of what occurred during that period in time. Uh, my purpose was to get people to wake up and actually talk about the issues, that children are being denied access to higher education, that they're being denied access to a proper education, that we have a plurality of children in this state that can barely read and a majority of children who do not read proficiently. I think that's child abuse. I think that that is the new Jim Crow. I think that if we don't talk about it as a new Jim Crow and deal with ripping off the veneer of this politeness, uh, then we're never going to get the issue fixed. So I can appreciate uh, that, yes, it may seem a bit crass. It was intended to be crass. Uh, and I think that if we don't start having real conversations about these issues that don't focus on one man, but start focusing on the policies and how they impact our communities, we're never going to get anywhere. We're just going to keep enjoying this uh, laissez-faire society where we call everyone uh, uncle this and anti that. Uh, and yet somehow- Did you vote for Trump in 2020? Did you vote for Trump in 2020? What? Excuse me? Did you vote for Trump in 2020? I did vote for President Trump in 2020. Okay. I thought that he gotcha. was I thought that it was a better choice for the country when I talked about the issues uh, that I care about. Again, look, for me, gotcha. uh, I've said many times my political engagement uh, is not blind. Uh, it's bound by what my father taught me at a young age, uh, the founding ethos of the Black Congressional Party, uh, that Black people have no permanent friends, no permanent enemies, uh, only permanent interests. I believe that the permanent interests of Black people today uh, it can be best secured by engaging through the prism of a conservative Sir, I'm so sorry. We have to go. We're, we're, we're going to get cut yeah. off, sir. How, yeah. how can folks follow you? How can folks follow you? You can go to joepinion.com. They can find us on Twitter, Joseph Pinion. They can find us on Instagram. I am Joe Pinion. But again, uh, from my perspective, it is not about left versus right. It's simply about engaging on the issues uh, that are truly impacting our society, the children who are not reading, the poverty. Well, why why aren't you independent then? If it isn't about left versus right, why aren't you independent? <laughs> Respectfully, we are. A, well, I, look, I, I believe we're a four party nation trapped in a two party system. I think denying that reality isn't a principle, it's foolhardy. Uh, and I think that. But, again, but you're saying it's not about left versus right, it is. We, I mean, well, no, no, no. these I parties the are reality, so split right now. I, I, I think the reality is you and are you're talking about the politics as it, I mean, look, again, you're, <laughs> you're talking about the politics as it was yesterday. I'm talking about the politics of what it can be tomorrow. This campaign and how we have chosen to conduct it has been about simply gotcha. saying we don't have to be bound by the politics that came before. And the reason why I brought up Fannie Lou Hamer and all those who went up to Atlantic City with the burnt up car of, uh, In of 1964. Of yeah, the reason why I and talk she was about preempted that, by LBJ. Yep. 
Right. The reason why I talk about it is because I often tell people, I don't, Fannie Lou Hamer was beaten with an inch of her life by effectively Klansmen, went to ask people who were a party of Klansmen to seat individuals that looked like her so that we could have a voice. And I don't think she did it because she hated herself. She did it because she realized that no. we have to be in the room. That the decision she was, was an advocate. She was an advocate for, for voting rights and she was calling out the party at the time who was not an advocate for voting rights. Well, right. But I but have she, to go, sir. I, 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 was... I, have, I have to go, Mr. Pinion. I, I do have to go. Former, former Newsmax host, he is currently running to be Senator of New York. He is challenging Mr. Chuck Schumer. Love to have Senator Schumer come on the show. Never been on before. Brother, I know this has been a tense conversation, but I do appreciate you coming on and, uh, and, not, and not hanging up. <laughs> so, well, uh, look, man, all like good. In the, the day, the, democracy demands debate. Uh, I wish it could have been a little bit more cordial at the beginning, but bygones be bygones. Have a good day.